Volcano collisions are a serious public health issue around the world. Each year, millions of people are injured in crashes that result in pain, lost time at work, and stress at home. Over the last few years, scientists have studied the nature of auto injuries in great detail, and their findings have made it easier for us to understand how these injuries occur, diagnose the exact cause of the patient's pain, and treat auto injury cases more effectively. In this video, we will describe the anatomy of the human neck, explain how injury occurs during auto collisions, and show how we can help pinpoint the cause of your pain and create an effective treatment program that will get you back on the road to health. The human neck is an incredibly complex structure made up of muscles and tendons, blood vessels and nerves, and bones and ligaments. Any of these anatomical structures can be injured in an auto collision, depending on the severity of the crash. The spine is made up of individual vertebrae that are designed to support our heads and protect the spinal cord. The vertebrae are separated by flexible discs that act as shock absorbers. Ligaments are thin, fibrous bands of tissue that hold bones together. In the spine, these ligaments act as straps to hold the vertebrae together and limit motion. The muscles attach to the bones of the spine, head, and ribs via tendons. The bulk of the neck is made up of muscle, and these muscles serve three purposes. They stabilize the spine and allow us to keep our heads upright. They allow us to move our heads. They protect the network of nerves and blood vessels that travel to the head and arms. The human body is a vertical structure and can easily absorb the force of gravity in everyday activities. Because of its design, the spine can handle moderate amounts of compressive force. Movement from side to side or from front to back, however, is a different story. Since the vertebrae of the neck allow a wide range of motion, they provide very little protection from horizontal motion. The muscles of the neck are there to keep our heads upright so they are very poor at resisting rapid movement from the rear or side. So the only anatomical structures protecting the integrity of the spinal column from rear-end collisions are the ligaments that hold the vertebrae together. And it is in the ligaments of the spine where the most serious whiplash injuries occur. Let's look at the biomechanics of rear-end collisions to see why these injuries are unique. Studies on the biomechanics of rear-end collisions have been conducted since the 1950s. It was in those crash tests that researchers first discovered the basic motion of a rear-end collision. They found these basic phases of occupant motion. First, the occupant starts out in a normal position. Then, as the car is rapidly accelerated, the car seat pushes the occupant's body forward. The head remains stationary until the rapidly moving torso yanks the shoulders forward causing the head to extend violently backwards. Next, after the head extends backwards, it begins to rebound forward. In the final phase of the collision, the occupant's head is thrown ahead of the torso. At first, researchers thought that injuries from these types of collisions were caused by hyperextension. That is, the head and neck were thrown backwards beyond the normal range of motion. Research in the 1970s and 1980s found, however, that in low-speed collisions, the head did not move beyond this normal range. How then could injury occur in these patients without hyperextension? Researchers in Japan first discovered the answer to this question. They decided to analyze the motion of an occupant using video x-rays. They subjected the occupants to low-speed collisions and then carefully analyzed the motion of the cervical vertebrae. Their discovery has dramatically changed how we understand auto injuries. To understand how injuries can occur in a low-speed collision, we first need to understand normal spinal motion. This video fluoroscopy footage shows normal motion of the neck. As we see, during normal flexion and extension, each vertebrae contributes equally to the overall movement of the neck, resulting in smooth, regular curving of the spine. This smooth motion of the spine is made possible by the facet joints on each individual vertebrae. As you can see, the facet joints are angled backwards. During normal spinal movement, these facets glide across one another, allowing the spine a wide range of motion backwards and forwards. Up until 1996, researchers assumed that the spine moved the same way during a rear-end collision as it did during normal activities. 
This simple whiplash motion was seen as normal position before the impact, extension backwards, rebound motion forward, and then back to normal. The Japanese researchers found a completely different type of motion. Here's what they found. The occupant starts out in the normal position. Then, as the seat back is accelerated forward, the torso moves with it, creating a straightening of the spine. At the same time, the occupant is sliding up the seat, causing an upward motion of the spine. Since the head is not being accelerated, it remains stationary as the seat continues to push the torso forward. This creates a rapid and violent differential motion between the upper and lower cervical spine. The Japanese researchers found that at this critical point, the lower cervical spine bends dramatically, while the rest of the spine remains straight. In fact, they found that in these joints with rapid bending, the joints exceeded their normal physiological range of motion. Dozens of studies since 1996 have reproduced these findings and have added even more insight. A group of U.S. researchers studied in detail the motion of the facet joints. They found that during the rapid bending phase, the facets were pinched and that the articular ligaments were stretched beyond their normal range of motion. Ligament injuries can be very serious. Knee injuries are a good example. When the knee is moved beyond its physiological range, the ligaments can be stretched or torn. The pain is severe, and sometimes the knee requires surgical treatment. The ligaments of the spine are just as susceptible to damage. Detecting a minor tear or stretching of the ligaments of the neck is much more difficult. Injured ligaments usually don't show up on x-rays, CT, or MRI scans. Orthopedic or neurological tests are often negative for these types of injuries. We know these injuries exist, however, since scientific studies show that ligament injuries do indeed occur from low-speed collisions. As we've seen in this video, auto collisions can cause injury to the ligaments of the neck. These ligament injuries can result in pain and loss of function. Our office uses a variety of state-of-the-art tools to objectively measure your body's response to the collision and pinpoint the area of injury. Once we've determined the exact cause of your pain, we can develop a treatment plan that will get you back on the road to health. If you have any questions or would like to set up an appointment, please feel free to contact our office.